my name is Sochi Gomez and I play Dawn Schaefer on The Babysitter's Club on Netflix. And I am going to read Dawn and the Impossible Three, number five, chapter seven. I had to do something about Christy. I was trying my hardest to be nice to her, but things were no better between us. So one day at school, out of the clear blue, I said to her, want to come over to my house this afternoon? I didn't even know I was going to say it. It just slipped out. I was as surprised as Christy was. And we were both pretty surprised when she replied, Okay, sure. What I had gotten myself into? What would Christy and I do? Every time we talked, it turned into an argument. Well, I thought, we could always watch a movie on the VCR. I hadn't seen The Sound of Music in a while. After school that day, I met Christy and we walked to my house together. Mary Ann didn't walk with us. She was babysitting for Charlotte Johansson, and the Johansons live in the opposite direction from me. That was just as well, since Mary Ann is sort of the cause of our problems. Christy and I need some time alone together. At first, we talked along in silence. Christy stared at the ground. She didn't look mad, but I felt uncomfortable being silent with her. Oh, we lived in, we lived in an old farmhouse. I told her, just to make conversation. It was built in 1795. Oh yeah, said Christy. Was she interested? Or did she think I was bragging? Yeah, I replied uncertainly. Do you like it? Mostly. It's neat living in a place that's old, but the rooms are kind of small and the doorways are low. The first time Mary Ann came over, she said the colonists must have been midgets. Christy burst out laughing. Then she caught herself and scowled. She pressed her lips into two straight lines. Thin lips are never a good sign. I cringed. How could I have mentioned Mary Ann? I really hadn't meant to. I went on about the house some more. When the house was first built, I said, there was nothing but farmland for miles around it. But Stony Brook kept growing and the people who owned the house kept selling off land until finally there was just one and a half acres left with a house, an outhouse, a barn, and an old smokehouse. It sort of got run down. By the time my mom bought the place, nobody had lived on the property for two years. We got it cheap. You have a barn on your property? Christy asked with interest. Mm-hmm. Do you play in it? Well, I said, I'm not supposed to go in it too much, but sometimes I play there. Why aren't you supposed to go in it? Mm, because it's old. Mom's afraid the roof will come crashing down sometime. She may be right. You don't have any animals, do you? Asked Christy. You mean in the barn? I shook my head. But the people who lived there before us must have. There's still bales of hay sitting around and there's tons of hay in the hayloft. There were great places to hide, and we rigged up a rope that we can swing down from the beam that's way high up under the roof and land in the hay. Really? said Christy. Yup. She paused. Then she said, I guess you and Mary Ann play in the barn all the time. Mary Ann? I exclaimed. Not a chance. She won't jump off the beam into the hayloft. She won't even go inside because of what my mom said about the roof. She may have changed the spring, but not that much. Christy looked at me and grinned. When we got home, the front door was locked, so I let myself in with a key. Back in California, I never needed a key. Mom was always home. Now I'm in danger of becoming a latchkey kid. I almost said so, but luckily I remembered just in time that Christy had been a latchkey kid for years. Instead, I said, I wonder where my mom went. We found out as soon as we walked into the kitchen, stuck to the refrigerator was a magnet shaped like a pair of lips with the note that said, hi kids, I've gone on two job interviews. Back at five, love mom. P.S. Do not under any circumstances touch the tofu ginger salad in the refrigerator. Christy looked at me wide eyed. You mean there's a chance someone would? I glared at her, but it turned into a smile. Yes. I replied, we all happen to love tofu ginger salad. It's good. Really? I added as Christy made gagging noises. 
<laughs> I looked helplessly around the kitchen. You're probably hungry, aren't you? Starved, Christy said. But, mm, but not so starved I'd eat tofu or sunflower seeds or something. I don't suppose you have any peanut butter? Sugar-free and unsalted, made from organically grown peanuts. That'll do. Any jam or honey? Raw honey. We already scooped the comb out. Wonder bread? High fiber wheat and bran. Christy may do with the peanut butter, honey, and bread. I ate some yogurt with wheat germ in it. I looked at Christy. Well, I said, what do you want to do? We could watch a movie on the VCR, or I could show you my room, or we could search for a house for a secret passageway. Could we go in the barn? Asked Christy. Sure, I said, as long as we're careful. We ran out the back door and across the yard into the barn. We didn't even need our jackets since the hayloft gets pretty warm on a sunny day. The main entrance to the barn, which I should say is not a very big barn, is a pair of sliding doors on one end. We leave one of the doors partway open all the time. We've stored some stuff in one of the horse stalls, but nothing that's worth stealing. Christy and I stepped through the opening. Oh, said Christy, it smells like a barn. I mean even without the animals. I know, I said, isn't it great? You could almost imagine you were on a big old farm out in the middle of nowhere. I think the barn smell comes mostly from the hay. We walked down the aisle between two rows of stalls. The stalls had long ago been cleaned out and the harnesses and tools that had once hung on the walls had been removed. But here and there, a nameplate remained. Christy read a few of them aloud. Dobbs, Gray Boy, Cornflower, Aside from the stalls and some old feeding troughs, there wasn't much to see. How do you get to the hayloft? asked Christy. This way. I led her to the end of the barn. A ladder was leaning up against the loft, which was just a couple of feet above my head. We climbed up and Christy walked around in the hay. Hmm, she said. It's soft, sort of. It smells good. She looked up. The roof was high above us. The sun shone through the cracks and caught dusts of moths in its light. Neat, she said. So quiet in here. You want to swing from the rope? I asked. Uh, sure. I, I mean, I think so. How high up is it? I'll show you. A series of wooden blocks were built into the wall above the loft. They went up and up and up. I climbed them until I reached a beam that was 12 feet above the hayloft. Swing that rope up to me, I called to Christy. Christy looked doubtfully at the rope, then at me. All the way up there, she said. Sure, it's easy, just try it. Christy took hold of the end of the rope and swung it over and up. I missed it by inches. We tried it again and I caught it. Watch this, I yelled, holding on to the knot that, tied near, that was tied near the bottom of the rope. I pushed away from the wall and sailed out and down. When I had almost reached the other, uh, the other wall of the barn, I let go and landed with a thump in the hay. Oof, oh, that was great. Do you wanna try? I stood up brushing the hay off my jeans. I guess so. Christy began her ascent. She was climbing the wall awfully slow. Um, you don't have to go all the way to the beam if you don't want, I told her. No, I can do it. Christy sat shakily on the beam. I tossed the rope to her. The expression on her face as she flew through the air changed from sheer horror. Let go, let go, I screeched as she approached the opposite wall. To amazement, to joy when she landed. She sat in the hay for a moment, then leaped up and exclaimed, oh wow, that was terrific. We each took five more turns, Christy looking cockier every time. Then we lay on our backs in the loft gazing at the roof and watching the sunlight grow dimmer. We began to talk. We talked about divorces. They should be against the law, said Christy. I agreed. We talked about moving. Across this town is nothing compared to across country, I pointed out. Christy agreed. We talked about the babysitter's club. It's more important to me than school, I said. Christy understood. Then we talked about Marianne. 
After saying some boring things like how good she looked in her new clothes, Christy said, I'm glad she made a new friend. Really? I asked. Yes. She needs new friends. Well, I'm glad she still has her old friends. You know, I've been thinking, said Christy. We should have an alternate officer for our club. Somebody who can take over it any job if one of us can't be at a meeting. Someone who understands each office. Would you like to be the official alternate officer? Definitely, I replied. Mm. And that was how, all in one day, I patched up my problems with Christy and became official alternate officer of the Babysitter's Club. So that was chapter seven of the Babysitter's Club, Dawn and the Impossible Three, number five. I totally encourage you to go get this book and completely finish the entire book because it's so good. Um, and tune into our show, Babysitter's Club, on Netflix.